Hi guys, Squirrel here. I'm back with some Train Simulator. Only this time I've got something a little bit different. So, you probably are aware that a lot of DLC for Train Simulator is available in Steam. However, you can get it from other sites as well, as well as make your own. Now, there is a website called Just Trains. And I've been over to Just Trains and bought some stuff, okay? Some things that were recommended to me by one of my subscribers, they said, hey, hey, Paul, you know, you really need to look out for the Scottish East Coast Main Line, and in particular, uh, the Voyager train, which is this one, the, the, the Voyager Class 221. So, I went over there, they just happened to have a sale on. At the time of this video, the sale is still on, and there's a link in the video description, but before you go rushing over there to uh, splash your hard-earned money on it, watch the video and see if you think it's worth buying. One of the reasons I went for this Voyager 221 is because this is the train. This is the, if you like, one of the intercity trains that goes up and down the UK every single day. When my mother comes down to visit, uh, she gets on this Virgin Voyager train. So that particularly appealed to me. I really fancied having a go of that. Not only that, but I really love scotland it's a beautiful place and so i thought you know scottish east coast main line voyager virgin train it's got to be done so that's what i'm doing i'm good this video is i've decided i'm gonna make i'm gonna do uh which one this one this is the one i'm gonna do today it's quite a long journey it's gonna take 95 minutes so i'll probably have to split the video up but as you can see, it's the advanced, the Voyager Advanced VT221 from Dundee to Penzance first leg. The reason it's the first leg, because it says here, the longest train journey in the UK, the longest direct train journey, is a 704 mile journey from Penzance to Dundee. This particular journey is going to take us from the first leg, which is Dundee, down to Edinburgh. Sounds great if you know the UK quite well, but what if you don't? Well, let's have a look exactly where that will take us. So here we are, this is the United Kingdom, and if we zoom in, obviously Scotland is up here, I'm sure everybody knows where Scotland is, but where's Dundee? Well, Dundee, by the way, if you don't know where Penzance is, Penzance is here, <laughs> the very tip of Britain, right down there, so you can imagine a journey from Penzance all the way up to Dundee is a very long line indeed, but today we're just going to do this, let's have a look at it, zoom into Dundee. There we go. So, Dundee Station, obviously it, we're going to come out and we should be crossing a bridge. I'm not sure what bridge that is. And popping down to, I think the first stop is uh, that one there. Lucar, I don't know how you say that. Obviously we're trekking through the Scottish countryside. We're then going to cross down into Kirkcaldy. Uh, Kirkcaldy is here by the coast over the water again and then eventually we'll end up at Waverley Station in Edinburgh. Edinburgh is a beautiful city and that's where we're going to go today so exciting journey should be some good scenery however one of the things I do have to mention is if you are thinking about buying this train this is a very realistic train the simulation of it is a bit more than what you normally get if you are going to do it then I strongly urge you to take there's a here it is the voyager new kid on the block complete that scenario there because that will teach you how to how to get this train moving it's not straightforward anyway it's a great train i'm sure it'll be a great journey let's get started Alrighty, here we are uh some of the car tasks this pick up passengers from dundee five car dundee platform two good morning we're expected uh, Edinburgh Waverley Platform 20, uh, approximately 12.30. Please open the doors to allow your passengers to board. Let's do that. Now then, let's just have a quick look around. You can see the train. You see this? This is the key. This train has not been started properly yet. So let me see. Shift. See if I remember the Shift W. That'll put the key in. We need to reset the driver reminder appliance. Otherwise, we can't go anywhere. We then need to... Put this thing into neutral, clear the AWS and put it into forward, clear the AWS again, uh, what's that one, 
Is that CMS? I'm not sure. Yes. Okay, that's that clear. Is everybody in yet? I think we're ready to go. Right, let's leave. And we are good to go. Trust me, the very first time I I tried driving this train, it was <laughs> it confused the hell out of me. It is not the easiest train. It's a really good simulation. Oh, I'll tell you one thing I haven't done. Put the lights on, see? I need to put the lights on to daytime configuration. That's uh, one white on the front. So you see that configuration there? High level and a left hand and a right hand if you have a look at the front of the train. That's exactly what you've got. The high level, the left, main and the right. At the rear we should have red tail lights on. There we go. You can also set the destination at the front of this train. You can set it here. Um, a digital display but I've not actually read up on how to do that just yet. You've even got, look, climate control. Should we put the climate control on uh, auto? Let's keep the passengers comfortable. It's a very, very... Listen to this. Listen to this. This is the national radio. <laughs> oh, brilliant! This is a NRN radio test call. <laughs> I'm speedy. That is so good. Brilliant. Now look at the scenery, guys. Look at this. Now this is some train, eh? What fantastic scenery. You see these trains on the U on the UK every day. Going up and down the countryside. Right, let's try and stick to the sort of looking around the scenery here. <laughs> Whoa! Epic bridge incoming. Oh, and the um, another thing is the engines. Can you hear that? How beautiful are they? That is an authentic recording. And I can tell you firsthand that's exactly what it sounds like. I know that. But when you get inside, wonderfully quiet. Brilliant bit of sound isolation for the driver. Okay, let's pop my head out the window and have a look around. You know, I do knock this game for some of the things in it, particularly around the people and the cars. But when you see things like this, you think to yourself, maybe this game isn't so bad after all, scenery-wise. I mean, that is a heck of a... Somebody had to sit and model this thing. That is some detail, that is. I'm pretty certain if you've been on this line, you'll know exactly what this looks like, so you'd be thinking, that really is a good approximation. Oh, look at this, there's the um, previous bridge struts by the look of it. I'm guessing there was another section just here. Or maybe they're building another section. What? That's another possibility. Are they building another bridge here? Or is that a previous bridge, I wonder? Yeah, the detail in this cab. Look at this, right? We've got um, independent instrumentation lighting, which is that thing there. You can also turn on the cockpit lighting if you want more daylight inside the cockpit. Uh, what else have we got? We have passenger door buttons. They don't seem to work. They're not mapped either. The lighting I've shown you. When you start the train up from cold, there's a startup procedure you go through and all these lights light up and you have to clear down these TWS faults. And then the display initializes. It's all very cool. If you're a bit of a train nut, you're going to love this train. Speed up to 35. Oh, I love that engine. Now, there is, funnily enough, a 
a, a controller peripheral unit you can get for Train Simulator. Um, I think it's called mm, the Rail. Uh, what's it called? I can never remember the name of this thing. Not Railworks. I'm trying to think of the name of it. It's it's basically a unit that has, you know, these these handles here. I'm just about to speed. Hang on a sec. Let's curb some speeding. There we go. It has these handles here, and it has an absolute uh, army of buttons on them. But it's been quite difficult to get the thing in the UK. Everywhere is out of stock. If you live in the US, it's a lot easier to get hold of. I think they're made by a US company. They're not cheap, though. Um, I think you're looking at $200 in the US, and that translates to something like £200 in the UK. Um, but I managed to find a company that did it for 180 so I'm seriously considering getting one. If I'm going to play this game a lot more, then I want to enjoy it as I do with the... I'm assuming that it will tran be transformed in some way. <laughs> Probably not, but when I got Euro Truck and I had the steering wheel, the steering wheel absolutely transformed that game. And I'm thinking that peripheral will transform the game. But not only look, not only that, I think it'll look kind of cool uh, on, the st on the stream. When I stream it, I'll have the camera on. And you'll be able to see me operating the controls. Because some of the key mappings in this game by, by default are a little bit weird, I think. Well, that, maybe that's just me. That was the AWS, I think. Oh my life, look at this. What amazing scenery. You see, the headlight is actually quite bright on this thing. Get back in the cab. We're about to change speed limit. So you can see the speed limit change there, but when it only changes when the back of the train goes into the new speed limit. That's just the way trains work. Hey, it's a bus. Thought I'd signal him. That's the B, B for Bell. Could we go outside? And then there's space bar. Does the whistle. 75 miles per hour. This is super quiet in here, isn't it? What else have we got? Windscreen wiper. So the wiper has... Oh, washer jet. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, that would have been so cool. The wiper has two positions on it, um, which we'll see. You have that one. And then you have that one. And... There's an intermediate setting there, intermittent setting, which I hope works. And it does! Brilliant bit of detail. Let's turn it off for now. Hopefully we won't need that. Now the train itself, if you just buy the train, the train comes with a number of scenarios. Um, you don't have to buy the Scottish East Coast Main Line. The train comes with quite a few scenarios. In fact, it even hooks itself into things like the London to Brighton route. So if you've got that, then... Um, you can actually do the London to Brighton route in this train. And even a notice, I think, Cajun Pass. Oh, wow. <laughs> Open Cass Quarry. But if you buy the scenario as well, then you get, as you can see, some, pr Ooh, some pretty detailed scenery to drive through. Scotland is a very nice place to drive through. Even in a car. Where are we? Right, 3.8 miles away. I'm just curbing my speed slightly. Wow, is that a... That's a platform. I wonder what the tanks are. Are they oil or gas or something? Possibly even water? This is a tilting train, so if we get up to some serious speed, I think there's a, if you look up here, maximum speed 125 miles per hour, cab 1, and the serial number. Uh, there's nothing much else going on. One thing I did notice, there's a little plug so you can have a shave and then charge up your mobile, which is kind of cool. Cupboard light turns on uh, this little light here. That one there. So you clip your notes to it or whatever, I guess. A bit more applicable at night than in the day. It's currently very sunny. Um, but some of the other scenarios I've seen that you get with the train are pretty... There's one of them. It has four red dots next to it. 
basic means that's a very very difficult um, scenario to play but yeah this thing does tilt you can actually turn the tilt off with this the tilt isolation button this is one detailed train I tell you what does this thing do the horn Ooh. <laughs> I didn't realize the horn had its own handle. Okay, let's start killing the speed now. We are 1.75 miles away from our first pickup at, um, how do we say that, Lucar Platform 1. I showed you that on Google Maps. I think it's quite good to see a scenario on Google Maps because you get a real sense of where it is. So I might try and do that on every single one that I make. Because, although some of them aren't really authentic, I've noticed. I think there was one I was doing over in Germany or Austria or somewhere. And I was looking for it on Google Maps and it turned out that it was a fictitious uh, journey. So not, not everything I'll be able to show on Google Maps. But things like this I definitely can. And the London to Brighton line, places like that, I definitely can. I did drop quite a bit of money on this game during uh, the Steam sales, which is pretty much the best time to get it. Okay, we've got a warning ahead. I'm going to start slowing down. We've got a 55 limit incoming as well. Um, so basically, I, I dropped quite a bit of money on this game in order to make sure I've got enough content to make videos from. I am not going to be able to drop to 55, I don't think. I've got 80% break going on here. I am speeding. I really am speeding. Wow, this thing is not slowing down. Holy cow, I'm about to miss my first platform. Whoa, why is it taking so long? Stop. <laughs> Did anybody want to get off here? Because it ain't going to happen, people. Oh, dear. Oh dear. Hmm. Should we go back? That's not very good of me, is it? Oh dear. Right, um. <laughs> I'm sure they won't mind if we just reverse back into the platform. We're just going to lose time, obviously. That took so, an unexpectedly long time to to stop. Way, way longer than I thought it would do. Not to worry. We'll get the passengers. We shall get... <laughs> you might be a minute late. The driver was a bit of a noob. I didn't. I thought there was better braking on this thing. I really did. Okay, right, we're in. While they're doing that, we shall put the selector back into forward position. Hmm. You know what? I'm not even sure we're supposed to be here right now. Look, it thinks we've not done it anyway. I needn't have bothered. It's not even credited me with, with actually doing that. Oh well. Now we're behind time. Um, 11.28 pickup. ETA 11.28. Oh, I've lost a lot of points for doing that. Luckily enough, this is not career mode. It seems to be... I didn't see any jobs, any career mode scenarios for this thing, actually. I think they're all in the normal drive. What is that alarm? I'm not loving that alarm. Okay, I think we're on the move again. Um, okay, okay, what's the alarm? I don't know. Stop it. There is a scenario tr um, for that train in this scenario list. 
It's the classic British diesel train. Okay, so that's the first cock up. Let's hope that's the only cock up. Annoyingly, though, I went back to the platform and it didn't credit me with me stopping the. I think reversing into the platform is completely illegal. <laughs> I'll probably be sacked for doing that. Going the wrong way. I'm going to have to watch out for that braking distance. That took an extraordinarily long time to slow down. Now, ETA, 1128. Let's see if we can claw back some of the time and try and get the rest of these stations on time. So I'm reckoning I need to start slowing down about a mile out. I don't think... I think what screwed me then was the fact I was also coming downhill a little bit. I should have hit the whistle over there. So I think the downhill screwed me slightly as well. But we shall see. A lovely train. The red on the green background looks lovely, doesn't it? What other buttons have we got in here? What's that one? Emergency brake, let's not press that. That's the current speed, miles per hour. I think that's the brake, is that the brake pressure? Oh, there's that the brake pressure in bars, maybe. Down the bottom here it's got the um, engine speed and the ampage that it's generating, you can see down the bottom there. I have no body. It's not even a pedal, you'd think they'd use the feet a bit more. You'd think they'd put some controls at the driver's feet. Right, speed limit's just changed. Time to accelerate up to 85. Currently, my ETA is looking good for the platform. Oh, this is cool. Look at this. That train as well is part of the scenario. You can drive that train around the Scottish East Coast Main Line. The one thing I do like is the authenticity of this game. The fact that you can see these trains in the real world and then you can get in this game and drive them. That's a true measure of a sim. Let's just be careful that I don't speed. I wonder how, how many points do I lose for not hitting that platform? I can't remember. Okay. We are 2.3 miles out. We just hit a yellow warning light. Probably a double. Just need to watch out for the next one. If that's a yellow, I'm going to have to stop. But again, just for those of you that aren't familiar with train simulator signalling, you get a double yellow first. That means that, if you like, in two signals time it will be a red, or potentially a red. So you should be prepared to stop. Uh, if you then get the next signal is a one yellow, it means the next signal is a red light. And you really should start braking at that point. Okay, so here's the... Oh, I'm speeding now because I'm not paying attention. So it's a green, so we're okay. So it's losing some points for speeding again. I should probably start slowing down anyway. So that's really bad. Speeding through a curved section of the track is going to damage the train. So that's me being naughty again. Right, I'm going to start slowing down. Because this thing, it's like trying to stop a mountain. Let's try that. Okay, we're coming into Kupar. I have never heard of these towns in Scotland, I must admit. Point six miles out, 47 miles per hour. I'm going to start slowing down now. 75% braking. Let's reduce it a little bit. Would you at 11.26? Okay, so we're early. That's good. There's a lot of fine control on the throttle. A lot of trains have sort of, you know, 20% markers on the throttle. Like you can go 20, 40, 68, 100. This thing is, you know, completely every kind of 1% fine grain control. 
which is kind of nice. Okay, right, 0.2 of a mile. I'm going to start braking now. I will not overshoot this platform. Is there anybody actually here to get on this train? That would be such a disappointment if there wasn't. So you can see there's 40% braking and the speed doesn't exactly come down very quickly. Just lighten off the, f off the brakes a touch. The headlight in their face. Look at the shadow of that dude on the wall. Okay. Let's get the brakes on. We got here on time, I think. Yes. Cool. Okay, so after that first little transgression at the platform, the second platform... How many people? One, two, three, four, five guys. Five guys. Identical models. Identical clothing. Ridiculous. If I was in charge of this company, I would be sitting there going, What the hell, guys? Sort it out. Seriously, get a modeler in and do some more people and do some more outfits. You don't want to see this in your game, do you? You don't. You just don't want that. I used to see that kind of thing in the 90s in games. Just a, there literally is three different kinds of model of person on this platform. Okay, there's an alarm going off. I don't know why. Why are we taking so long at this platform? Seriously, guys. Get your suitcases. Get off my train. That's the other thing, isn't it? You should be able to see people with carrying luggage. Like, where are the little kids? Where are the old people? Where are the young people? Where are the, you know... Where's people pulling trolleys and stuff? That's what people do on trains like this. They make journeys with luggage. Wow, this is a hefty stop. Depart 11.28. Trust me, I want to go. Come on, I need to go on time. What on earth are they all doing? I think there's a party going on in that corner. <laughs> right, come on, come on, come on. This is going to be 11.29. I want to leave. Thank you. Right. Is the door shut? Yes. Let's get out of here. You lot, you made me late. Are you missing a despawn? Just walk up the stairs. Stupid people. Right, accelerate. Let's get this thing up to speed. Oh, that beautiful engine. Have you noticed how it's louder back here? This game is all about the train simulation. And nothing about... The environmental simulation, the cars and the people are so pants in this game. Never mind, maybe Train Simulator 2014 will improve upon that, you think? Actually, should we take it? We're about to go up to 100 miles an hour, so let's have a pop back into the. Did somebody just laugh? Alright, mate! Where's the luggage? Hey, Mr. Cool Guy with a squished head. Apparently when it rains, you get rain on the windows as well, on the passenger windows. Oh, crap. Oh, how annoying is that? It's reset, it's done an emergency brake on me. Because I didn't clear an alarm, I couldn't hear, because I was sat in the, with the passengers saying hi, being friendly. So now I've got to let this thing stop and I'm going to lose points for an emergency break and I'm going to lose time. This isn't going well. Let's 
reset this thing. Let's put it in neutral maybe. Can we go now? Thank you. In days gone by, I wouldn't have been able to do that. But now I understand this game better. When it hits an emergency, I know how to actually reset the whole thing. I can see something ahead. Is that a fire? Or is that a steam train? I wonder. We should have been going through it at 100 miles per hour, but not anymore. Let's have a look out the window. Moo! It's a fire, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, that's wicked. That's pretty good, actually. There's a crane moving logs around and there's a fire in the yard. Right, four miles to Lady Bank. That's the alarm I need to clear. Lady Bank Platform 1. Lady Bank is, I think, the name of the, pla the the station that's in Marking or something, the town, I believe. Don't need to clear that one because that was an AWS signal on a green. So that ping, that is you press Q for it to clear the AWS. If you want to do it for real, you would press that button there. Uh, but the Q key just maps to that. But you don't need to clear it when it's green. You only need to clear it if it flashes the AWS alarm, which is this thing here. You get that flashing like that. Then you press Q. Now we're about to go to 85, so that said whistle. Which, do you see that W on the side of the road there? That means whistle because there's a level crossing. Okay, let's drop it down to 80, 85, there we go. Sometimes I'm pretty good at this game, and then other times, as you can see, I've missed a platform and then managed to hit the emergency brakes because I was talking to the passengers. There she is. The diesel. There's one scenario with that train that's got a load of um, heavy tanks on the back. Like tanks full of oil or something. Very heavy load. Makes a nice change from passenger trains. The only thing I don't like about this train is it's not long enough. It's only four, um, one, two, three, two engines and three passengers. And that's really disappointing. I think they only made it that long so that it'll fit inside the platforms it wants to stop at. But, um, you know, the real thing is massive. When you see the train that goes from Edin Edinburgh down to London Euston, which is the train that my mother gets, it's enormous. Um, you know, so you got on at carriage G and it goes all the way down to I think J or H you know that's a lot of carriages right we need to slow down we do need to slow down I am disappointed with the braking distance on this train I really am it stops like a lot of the freight trains have driven and I don't quite understand why Clear the AWS. This game needs track IR though. I'd love to be able to look round like this with my head. They really need to support track IR. Okay. ETA 11.36, should have been there at 11.34 I think, what time are we leaving? 11.34 was the scheduled leaving time. I may just overshoot this, you know. That's because of that alarm reset, the uh, brake reset, that's the problem. Yeah, we're going to overshoot, look. I have missed the platform. Oh, maybe not, maybe not. Maybe we'll do it. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> Look at this! Skin of the teeth! Oh my life! Wow! Okay, I'm late, but I made it. That's brilliant. 